talk to people differently on, on based on how you know them and, and how familiar you are with them. And again, the task oriented is different too in raids and in, in games. People are giving out very quick commands. They're doing things on their keyboard. They don't have time to sit there and type out a huge lines of text. We've done some studies on that with uh, real hardcore MMO players in EVE Online, right? And uh, we asked them, do you use voice, yes or no? And then how do you use voice? Regardless of technology, um, you know, what do you do when you talk? And about 20% of people in this hardcore PvP MMO said, we only use it for tactical command and, co command and control. And 70%, 75% of people said they use it both for socializing and for tactical coordination. And you know, 5% of people said they never use voice. This is, depends on the type of game you have. EVE is a very uh, slow-paced game, uh, and that's a design issue, right? So if, you're, if you have downtime, which I think, by the way, is a good thing to have in, a, in an MMO because it does promote social behavior, right? Uh, I think social mechanics are things that are lacking in, uh, in the second-generation MMOs that if they really did some good social architecture in those games, they'd have people stick a lot longer. I think 3D spaces are great for a lot of things. Every 3D shopping experiment has failed miserably because it's inefficient and not that much fun. I think that's design, though. I have, mm. I have, to, I have to say I think that's a lot about design. I, I think that you can make things interesting. You give people, if people knew that one of those dresses had a golden ticket that was worth a lot of money, uh, you know, there's motivational, boy, you learn this in gaming real quick. You learn how to game people. You learn how to get people interested by making it in a game. I wanted to ask about how real are these relationships? How, how are these digital relationships? How, how is love online as emotionally important to humans as love in the physical world? Is it as real or is it? Oh, yeah, it, it's real. I yeah. mean, many, even with, uh, you know, uh, you hear about all these, uh, with UO it's happening, EverQuest is happening. People come together and they, and they have similar goals and interests and they, and they play to, re, to achieve levels in a game. They, they get really good social bonds together. We had many marriages, many, many, many marriages in UO, uh, virtually as well as the real world. Anybody here in the audience ever fallen in love online? Yeah? Anybody want to talk about it? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> and the, you know, the pressing question of whether that um, leeches time and energy away from primary relationships is a key question. And I think that also is a question that comes out of an assumption that having close relationships in your immediate physical community is the right way to have relationships. And I think that, you know, I would question that assumption. It's a different way to have relationships. And I think that we're reinventing what good relationships are. I think that there's no necessarily right or wrong. You know, Second Life and 3D worlds in general are quite a bit different from 2D spaces because of the collaboration and co-creation that they allow. It, it's not so much the, the, the business just of sharing information, it's co-creating content. The, the biggest challenge, frankly, for, for Second Life has been providing a reasonably quick way to get that context for why, why investing in learning how to uh, navigate in the 3D world is worth your time, worthwhile. Mm -hmm. That's where the biggest challenges are, giving people a better sense of what that value proposition is, what that context is. We're working at Shufflebrain, we're working on games that are doing something very different. They're not 3D, they're bringing together social media and puzzle games. And we've got a game called Photograb right now on Facebook. It's in beta that lets you turn di your own digital photos into puzzle games. It's all user-generated content. Great. That's a great example. And we've learned some really interesting things, one of which is, yes, not everybody is good at this. But what we found is that there's the difference between making content for lots of people, sort of it's the soapbox version of content. I want everybody to play this. We have some people that have emerged that are just incredibly good at this. They take great pictures. They you know, choose photos that make really good games, et cetera. But then there's a much larger class of people that are just putting their pictures of their kids up there because it's fun. And they want their 5, 10, 15 friends, close people, to see that. And surprisingly, they're having a really good experience. You know, even if their games kind of suck, if, on, the, on the more generic, you know, is this a great game? You know, how are people scoring at it? So it's really interesting to see the difference. So I think that the issue of user-generated content, you really need to look at who is it for.
Is it really a communication? Um, is it something, and I know Raf is dealing with the same issue. Is this communi about communication and self-expression, um, you know, one to small group, or is it really trying to do something great? The answer is usually it's both. 